Mike Mineta is the national director of Wolfpack. We're gonna talk about what the latest is and who we're going up against sometimes, where we're going to take the battle to them, how we're gonna get our democracy back. Before we do any of that though, for if anyone hasn't seen or heard of Wolfpack, what is it? So Wolfpack exists really just for one single purpose, and that is to get an amendment to the Constitution that will restore balance and integrity to our elections. It's a little bit uh, out of whack right now if you haven't noticed. <laughs> yeah, no, I, um, I've noticed. And you know, to deal with Citizens United and some of these other related cases that have uh, just destroyed our democracy, basically. And we believe that it, that it does need to be an amendment because uh, an amendment is the only thing that goes above the runaway Supreme Court and the runaway Congress that we've been dealing with over the last you know, four decades or more. So, uh, you know, state legislation, it's, it's fantastic that there are a lot of groups working on that. Uh, it, it all matters. You know, we need to be coming at this from every single avenue. Uh, we were, uh, you know, our bottom line here at Wolfpack is um, a couple of things. One is urgency, right? Mm -hmm. we, we have to be acting uh, with a sense of urgency because this problem has gotten so bad. Uh, two, yeah. we have to learn from history, which is what we're doing, you know, in the past. And we can get into that in, in more detail if you want. But in the past, we uh, found ourselves in a very similar situation in the early 1900s. Uh, the way that the senators used to be appointed was a sense of corruption, and the people used every tool of democracy they had, including the Article 5 path, which is what um, Wolfpack is pursuing. And, and courage. You know, we have to be leading with courage. Americans have uh, solved a lot of big problems. You know, going back all the way to the very beginning, the American Revolution. You know, they. Uh, Americans have literally risked their lives to give us a country that's dependent on the people. And uh, you know, we've, we've said this before, you've said it plenty of times, the least we can do is make some phone calls and go meet with our state legislators. And that's what we're doing, you know, and, and we're, we're on our way to doing it. And, and we, can't, we are going to do it, we have to, you know, we, have, we have no choice. Yeah. So look, uh, we're not asking you to do anything dangerous like pick up a musket or anything, but for God's sake, don't do that, okay? And by the way, we're not asking you to do anything as nearly as dangerous as the civil rights movement when the Freedom Riders would pull up into a small town in Mississippi with a Klan waiting for them. Now that was incredible courage. We can, in this case, 93% of Americans believe that politicians represent their donors and not their voters. So all we're asking you to do, Wolfpack is asking you to do is so from time to time, pick up a phone and, and call representatives or sometimes call other citizens and talk to them about talking to their mm -hmm. representatives. And so um, wolf-pack.com, you guys have heard me say it before. Because if we don't get money out of politics and we don't do campaign finance reform and get free and fair elections again, uh, then we're not gonna win on any of the issues. So that's why I keep talking about it because it is the central issue. I, I, Mike, I remember when we started Wolfpack, we couldn't, in the beginning, we couldn't quite convince people that this was the most important issue. I feel like mission mm -hmm. accomplished, check. Yeah, right. it's a pretty easy one these days. We go, we go door to door, we canvass is one of the things that our volunteers do uh, in, in key districts throughout the country. And it, it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or Democrat, you know, the citizens of this country get it and they're completely fed up with the corruption happening in DC. And uh, that's why I'm really confident that, we are, that we're on the right track here. Yeah, and then we couldn't get uh, people in the beginning to uh, agree that the amendment was the right way to go. They're like, oh, but what if Congress changes their mind, <laughs> right? right? Now, does anyone really dispute that it should be an amendment? Not really, right? We no, completely won that battle. Yeah, it's, you don't hear a whole lot of pushback on that anymore. Yeah, yeah. so now we're on to the third part of this, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, before we get to the third part, I wanna uh, let you guys know, uh, Wolfpack's actually doing a drive right now. And they're trying to hire this lovely guy, John. Okay. Yep, John Chen. Uh, so I want to show you where they are with that wolf packcom slash John. Because they need people. How many people work there now? You got basically three people because Allison left. Yeah, we right? only have a handful. It's a, yeah, less than a handful of people. Yeah. Nationwide. Allison, Allison and Hartson and, and Mike were the uh, national co directors of, of Wolfpack. Allison yep. Hartson now running against Diane Feinstein, trying to get money out of politics in a different way. By the way, they used to tell us, oh, money out of politics, that's an arcane issue people don't care about. It polls number one in California is the issue that people care most about. Okay, so they're not uh, they're not right. So uh, it's not like Wolfpack's. It's a giant organization in terms of over thirty thousand volunteers, but it's three staffers just trying to add a fourth, right? We, yeah. So before we get to the third issue that Wolfpack is dealing with now, can I see where we are with that? Do we have that up? Because what they're trying to do is trying to get to two hundred and fifty donors, and that's as simple as ten bucks a month, right? You do 10 bucks a month, what is that, three coffees in a whole month, right? 
and and they can hire John and 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 Mike's going to tell you about John and what a great volunteer he is in a second. But before we're done, let's do a mini mini uh, fun little kind of telethon here. It's at 147. By the time uh, we come back and tell you about John, can I see 150? Shao shao. That's only three <laughs> more people. Come on, we can do that, right? And and what's fun is that if you're watching live, you can help do that. If you watch this later. By the time you look at it, it's going to be a totally different number. And whatever it's it is, exciting. make it a little higher. Okay. Yeah, and we are. We're, we are completely, it will almost completely volunteer run. Right? We have mm -hmm. even our national coordinators, the, the ones that are keeping this going, uh, are, you know, dads and full, you know, they work full time. Uh, so, you know, and, and our funding is 99% pe 99 people who pay $10 a month. It's actually more than 99% if you really do break down the math. So we're truly grassroots and we, we do rely on our members and they've kept us going this far. We've been in, we've managed to get five states on the board with just that little staff, you know, nationwide. But we can, you know, every little bit counts. And I used to say this at the beginning a lot, but the math is on our side here. You know, that's another reason why I'm so optimistic. Like if you were, if just one third of 1% of the American population was willing to chip in just $10 a month to this plan this, that we have that we're executing that is gonna work, uh, we would have $10 million a month. To be able to fight back with, oh, we can yeah. do it with a lot less than that. Yeah, you so know what Wolfpack it's just a matter could do with ten million dollars a month. Yeah. Oh, pfft. I always tell you guys, warriors beat mercenaries, right? With ten million dollars a month, we'd run the table. Yeah. We would get your amendment in. I don't know, eighteen months. I don't so, want to overpromise, but yeah, it's just a matter of understanding that your ten dollars really does matter, and it's, it's literally the thing that's been keeping us going and allows us to slowly add staff, but it really matters. Every person that we add takes a lot off our shoulders. I mean, we work a lot, a lot of hours at Wolfpack and uh, you know, Allison did before she left, uh, worked harder than any person I'd ever seen. And uh, so it helps, you know, and we, really, and we appreciate it. So anything you can do is uh, very much appreciated here. So Allison Hartson was the other co-director along with Mike. Uh, and, and when she started running for the Senate in California, they're like, now remember, you're gonna have to travel, it's gonna be really tiring, you're gonna have to travel all over California. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Allison has traveled all over the country nonstop. I mean, 18 hour day after 18 hour day. She was in Hawaii, she goes to Maryland, she goes to Connecticut, Missouri, she goes to New yeah. Mexico, yeah, she goes to Missouri, it. right? So these guys are busting their ass for you. And and Allison took a pay cut, <laughs> from, cut, from, pay from, cut. from being a teacher, not from being a banker. She took a pay cut from being a teacher mm -hmm. to join Wolfpack. All these guys barely getting paid. They're all doing it out of, I'm not kidding, out of love of country and patriotism, right? Mm -hmm. And and we hired the last couple of guys, Aces and, and, and the mechanic, uh, through you guys uh, being donors and, mm -hmm. and, and helping out. Okay. Yeah, we wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. Yeah. Flat out. My favorite story is why do we call him the mechanic? Because he was a mechanic <laughs> before he joined this. Yes, I love was. that. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> right. So, uh, can, let me see uh, wolf-pack.com slash John one more time. 148, we're right. on the board. Okay, We're we'll on the board, it. can I see 150? Okay, we'll come back one to John time. in a second, okay? One person at a time. So, uh, now, we uh, Wolfpack won on the idea that we have to get money out of politics and that's the number one issue. It, it, and it, Wolfpack got started back in 2011, right? So it's been yeah. now uh, six years. And one on the idea that amendment's the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. So now the third leg of it, Mike, is uh, people are saying, well, uh, maybe Congress will do the amendment by themselves mm -hmm. and you don't need to call for a, a convention, an Article 5 convention. Yep. Um, <laughs> what do you think, like Mike, dangerous is idea Congress to gonna do it on their own? That sounds like the most dangerous thing we could do is trust them to fix this problem, actually. And uh, yeah, and that goes back to what I was saying earlier. So we might as well get into that history just a little bit so people have it. And early 1900s is the most parallel situation that we have, I think. So state senators, US senators, sorry, US senators used to be appointed by the state legislatures. And that was widely looked at as corruption because of wealthy elites and special interests used to pay off the, the state legislatures to get who they wanted to represent them in the Senate. And it was known as the Millionaires Club, right? So now they're both the Millionaires Club. But back then, they were the body of government that was looked at um, as the, being representative of the wealthy elites. So the people took it upon themselves to do everything they could to fix this problem, right? They did uh, petitions, they, they turned in petitions to Congress, they uh, passed state legislation, they passed resolutions asking Congress to propose an amendment. Everything that we're doing now, right? You have organizations uh, like Move to Amend, who's, who's been getting uh, states to pass resolutions asking Congress to fix the problem. They're doing fantastic work. And then finally, when all of that together didn't quite do it, 
they started passing Article 5 applications on that one specific subject. So, you know, one by one, they would say we're applying for a convention for the direct election of senators. And, you know, even back then, without the technology that we have today, it took about 13 years or so. And they got within one state shy of the two thirds needed to force a convention, and Congress was like, all right, we'll do it. But it was all of those things working together that finally got Congress to act. So we believe that that's the most likely scenario here, right? Like we would love to see a convention. We think it's a more democratic process. A convention of of the people at the state level would produce a better amendment than Congress is capable of producing. But the the more likely scenario is that if we can get to 15, 20, 25 states on this issue, on you know fixing Citizens United and. and special interest money in our elections, then Congress will act and they will propose an amendment. That's the most likely scenario. Yeah, and and, and God bless, if you if we pressure Congress into passing the amendment to get money out of politics, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, but uh, convention would also be great. Convention is part of our constitution. Convention, the founding fathers said at some point, Washington is gonna get corrupt enough that you're gonna need the states to call for a convention. Mm-hmm. And so if it turns out we go to a convention, I know what some of the fear mongering is. Well, well, the right wing can also show up. Yes, they also live in this country. And if you believe in democracy, yes, the right wing and the left wing, that's why Wolfpack is nonpartisan. They should all be able to go and propose amendments on this issue. You can't do it on many different issues. That is the number one line that they say, Oh, there'll be a general convention and oh my God, they'll propose that the lizard people take over. Yeah, well, that's a frustrating part of our job, obviously. And it's if you research, you know, Article Five, you will find some a decent amount of articles that are uh, fear mongering, honestly. And that's what it is because the scholarly research that has been done around a convention, the Department of Justice, the Congressional Research Service, the American Bar Association, all point to the fact that the states do have the power to call them in a convention, and that there are actually mechanisms in place for those limitations to be enforced. And the it's almost reaching a point of like witch trial hysteria out there, and it's just it's it's easier to spread fear, you know. And there are people, uh, some people on the left don't want a convention for a balanced budget, and this idea of a runaway convention didn't even exist until the 70s, right? It's important for people to realize that. Again, I was just telling you, it was the progressives who pushed for that convention in the early 1900s. So they weren't there. That fear mongering talking point didn't even exist. It was created in the 70s by the John Birch Society and Common Cause because they didn't want a convention for a balanced budget. And that has been just repeated over and over again in op-eds, but you will not find that in the scholarly research. And think about it now, look look at what the Republicans just did. They just put a one and a half trillion dollars onto the deficit. You think they're gonna do balanced budget amendment now, (laughs) right? So all this fear mongering over what? A budget that the Republicans never balance anyway. No, it's that the people in power are entrenched and they don't want any change. And convention is an amazing tool for change. So when you hear that fear mongering, you're like, oh no, it could change things. Are you kidding me? We desperately need change. Our whole system's been corrupted. Yeah, and when they talk about the idea of a runaway convention, it's misleading because what they're implying is that you can actually change the constitution at the convention. So that's that's what they're picturing in their heads, yeah. and and it's easy to stir up that fear, right? Unless you go and you research it. But you only have to read Article Five; it's only a paragraph, and it's crystal clear that it only gives the power to propose to a convention, and that will hold up in any court, right? So there are uh, there are ways that a convention can be enforced, and one of them is our court system. So it's, so it's not even close, guys. Read Article Five; it says it is to propose amendments. It is not to rewrite the Constitution. And if we wanted, uh, if they wanted a general convention. They could already have one. There's already been hundreds of calls for a convention, and we don't have one. It's because you need 34, two thirds of the states on only one issue. So that's what Wolfpack is working on, on the issue of free and fair elections to call for a convention on that, and and, and so we can get it. And then it's and then by the way, that's not all. You do the convention, you still have to have 30. No matter what happens, you need 38 states to ratify. So afterwards, afterwards, yeah. after the convention. So I want to check back in on uh, with John. Uh, so uh, wolf packcom slash John. So if we get to 250, the guy's hired. Are you guys job creators or you're not job creators? I want to find out. Okay, let's take a look. 149. <laughs> We've got another one on the board. Can I see 150? Can I see 150? Okay, uh, and then 250 by the end of the year. And and so tell us about John. Uh, where did he come from? What's his story? Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's uh, well, he has the nickname the closer, and it was I love these nicknames. <laughs> it was because we were doing a campaign in Connecticut last spring, 
and he was always the last one in. You know, he would stay. You know, we would meet at a, a Panera Bread afterwards, and after we were done canvassing for the day, and he would often be. You know, we'd look around, and and he's still out there. You know, canvassing until well after it was dark out, and uh, even raining a couple times. So he's he's hardcore. He's extremely dedicated, and he's brilliant. And he has a, a master's from Yale, and he's willing to. Uh, you know. Not make as much money as well, and come in and work for this, work for Wolfpack, and help us get this amendment uh, full time. So he's someone that we really just want to have on our team, and uh, is going to be just as dedicated as the rest of us. So we would love to, uh, we'd love to bring him on. What other organization has a, a former mechanic and a guy who graduated from Yale working together to try mm -hmm. to bring democracy back? It's yep. an amazing group, and I look, I've seen it a million times with my own my own eyes, uh, but. Mike, and we only got less than two minutes left, but like, give me a sense of the states when, when people volunteer. And if you want to volunteer, by the way, I'd love that. Do that right now. Go to wolf-pack.com slash states. We'll have that link in the description box below if you're watching this later. And, and just pick your state and volunteer. They'll get back to you in 24 hours and get you in. Give me a state where, you know what, when you originally won mm -hmm. in Vermont, the first state that you put on mm -hmm. the board, Mike. Yeah. Uh, so how did that feel? It was incredible. I tell people this all the time, uh, even on a conference call just last night. Uh, there is no better feeling. I mean, you know, you were a part of something that is literally changing American history. And Vermont was obviously a big deal because it was the first state. You know, I told this story the last time I come on here, but they shuffled in a choir literally an hour before we passed our first state and played Amazing Grace. And and it was an hour before we passed our first resolution. It was powerful. You know, when that legislature stepped forward and became the first state. Ever to pass an Article Five call for the issue of saving our democracy, and yeah, it's been it's been a great ride, and our volunteers are amazing, and it's the best part of my job that we I get to meet people who are willing to go and work 40, 50 hours at their own job, you know, be husbands and mothers, and then also put in another twenty for Wolfpack, you know, throughout their week. We have an incredible group of people here. Allison organized a thousand volunteers in California. That was an amazing moment when it passed. I remember the quote she said. Feels so good to have the power back. So feel that, guys. Come join and 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 help them hire staffers as well, and we can do this together. So last time, let me see wolf-back.com/john. No, well, next time. <laughs> <laughs> and still no. Okay, next time. We'll get All right, there. guys, make it happen. Make we'll it happen. Let's see 250 by the end of the year. Let's hire John and. If you can give your time, that's the most important thing, volunteer. If you can't give your time, then at least donate. 10 bucks a month is not too much to ask for. And these guys are gonna make all the difference. And when we get that amendment, I guarantee you, there's never gonna be a better feeling than that. Let's go get democracy back.